Thank you very much. It's an honor uh, to be with you this morning. For 35 years, I've worked with gang members, so apparently President Lemura thought that made me eminently suited to address the class of 2019. You can take that up with her. Um, I, I know that uh, I'm the only thing standing between you and your diplomas, so I appreciate your attention. You know, folks at the margins uh, are hoping for some attention. I, I had a, a gang member very insistent, standing in front of my desk, and he said, look, I need your divided attention. And I said, well, you are in luck, because that's exactly what you'll be getting. Uh, what Martin Luther King says about church could well be said of your time here at Lemoyne. It's not the place you've come to, it's the place you go from. And you go from here to nurture and create a community of kinship such that God, in fact, might recognize it. You go from here to imagine a circle of compassion and then imagine nobody standing outside that circle. You go from here to choose to dismantle the barriers that exclude, and you do that in a particular way. You go out to the margins because that's where the joy is, and that is the only way that you can erase the margins, is by standing out at them. And you stand with the poor and the powerless and the voiceless. You stand with those whose dignity has been denied and those whose burdens are more than they can bear. And you get to go from here and stand with the easily despised and the readily left out. You get to go from here to stand with the demonized so that the demonizing will stop. And you go from here to stand with the disposable so that the day will come when we stop throwing people away. You go to the margins. You go to the margins because that's where the joy is. And you don't want to settle for happiness when you can have joy. And this is why our God, who loves us without measure and without regret, says, as I have loved you, so must you have a special preferential care and love for the widow, orphan, and the stranger, because God thinks these are the folks who know what it's like to have been cut off. And because they have suffered in exactly this way, these are the folks who happen to be our trustworthy guides to lead us all to the kinship of God. So you don't go to the margins to make a difference. You go to the margins so that the folks at the margins make you different. Our first uh, enterprise at Homeboy Industries, we've been around for 31 years, was our Homeboy Bakery, born in 1992. It was the first real exit ramp off this crazy, violent freeway. Enemy rival gang members wore hair nets and baked bread. And, and it was something of a novelty. People came from all over the world to see it. We would have film crews all the time. And once Prince Charles and his business advisors came and bus, bus loads of you know tour groups from, from Tokyo, you know, take me to your bakery. And, and our foreman at the time was a guy named Roman, and he was the biggest drug dealer I knew in the, in the community, and I knew them all. And he was a gang member, and he stopped, and he baked bread. He was uh, not just working with his enemies, he was a supervisor of them, which is a great deal more difficult. His growing up was torturous and terrifying, and he suffered abuse of every imaginable kind, and if his story had been aflame, you'd have to keep your distance, otherwise you'd get scorched. I would not have survived a single day of his childhood. 
Well, part of his job as a foreman was to greet these people that came to see Homeboy, because I always said yes, uh, because uh, you want to announce a message to the world. What if we were to invest in people rather than incarcerate our way out of our problems? And it, at a time in our history when the demonizing was writ large and people would accuse uh, Homeboy and as they will accuse you of going to the margins of wasting your time, we're reminded of Jeremiah who said, in this place of which you say it is a waste, there will be heard again the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voices of those who sing. So I always allowed tour groups and a press to come because I thought this is how other voices got heard. But Roman, his job was to greet them and tour the place and he hated this part and we were in the parking lot waiting for a, a group to come, a group of uh, agricultural magnates from Central California to come and tour Homeboy Bakery. And so he's having a bad attitude day and, and the bus pulls in and it's filled with all these farmers and I'm, I'm saying you can park over there and Roman notices the microphone that's at the front of the bus for the tour guide and he pretends he's the tour guide. Welcome to Homeboy Bakery. Observe gang members in their natural habitat. Please keep your hands in the bus at all times. Don't attempt to feed the homies. They are not yet tame. I'm saying, callate cabron. And so they, I greet them and they go in. I go to my office several blocks away. I come back in the afternoon and I see Roman and, and I remember the tour and I said, hey, how'd that tour go? He goes, damn, gee, what's up with white people anyway? I said, I don't know, what is up with us? He says, well, they always be using the word great. I said, really, I wasn't aware of this. He goes, yeah, check this out, this busload of gavachos, white people, come in and they see the bakery and it's clean and the ovens and everything's working and this place is great. And then they see the homies, enemies, rivals working side by side. You fellas are great. Then they try the bread and they say, wow, this bread, it's great. How can white people always be using the word great? I said, I have no idea. I'd never heard this before. And trust me, from that moment forward, every opportunity I could find, I told him how great he was just to mess with him. Well, cut to about six months later, I pull into the bakery at about 11 o'clock at night and it's closing time. Roman rushes me at, at my car and he says, you're not gonna believe what happened yesterday. Well, he tells me that he goes to pick up his four-year-old daughter, Clarissa, at the babysitters and he drives to his humble apartment. He's a single father, and he's now paying rent with honestly earned, clean, decent money. And he unlocks the front door, and little Clarissa goes running down the hall, and she lands in the sala, in the living room, and she plants her feet, and she extends her arms, and she takes the room in with her gaze, and she says, this is great. And he said, I thought she was turning white on me. <laughs> and he gets down at eye level and he says, Mija, what's great? And little Clarissa with great emotion clutches her chest and she says, my home? And it kind of takes our breath away. And the two of us stare at each other for what feels like an eternity and our eyes well up with tears and we stare at each other as the tears roll down our cheeks. And I break the silence and I say, you did this. You've never had a home in your life and now you have one. You did this. You used to be the biggest drug dealer in town and you stopped and you baked bread instead. You did this. You've never had a father in your life. 
and now you are one. And I hate to have to tell you, but you're great. And I hate to have to tell you that it was three months later that I retrieved that story from my memory bank to tell it at Roman's funeral. He was packing the trunk of his car for a camping trip, and two guys came by in a car, saw him, must have thought he'll do, and they killed him. And I stood in front of this packed church because I had been asked for a whole week before his funeral, what's the point of doing good if that can happen to you? And I found myself saying this, that before Roman left us, he knew the truth of who he was, that he was exactly what God had in mind when God made him. And he became that truth. He inhabited that truth. And no bullet can pierce it. No four prison walls can keep it out. And death can't touch it because it's great. And Lemoyne is not the place you've come to. It was always going to be the place you go from. And you go from here to the margins to imagine a circle of compassion. And then imagine nobody standing outside that circle. You go to the margins not to make a difference, but so that the widow, orphan, stranger, and Roman can make you different. And my sense of the class of 2019 already is this, that long ago you ceased to care whether anyone would accuse you of wasting your time for approaching those margins. For in this place of which you say it is a waste, there will be heard again the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voices of those who sing. Congratulations, and may God bless you, the class of 2019.